for thousands of the evil is ruling by delaying the reincarnation of the hero. However, it cannot be like this forever. Everyone has an identity. In different times and places, we all play different roles. But the young guy Lai Yunxing is still looking for the purpose of his life and what he is really supposed to be. Lai Yunxing loves riding his motorcycle, and he's in it too. He's actually the champion of underworld street racing. The closest person to Lai Yunxing is his best friend, Kesha. She secretly likes him too, but Yunxing is too dumb to realize that, and he often tries flirting with other girls. After the race, Yunxing rushes to work because it's not easy to survive in the cruel city of Donghai. It all links back to a mystery that happened 3,000 years ago. The Heaven Gods fought for supremacy, and another era of chaos and conflict began. Right now, Donghi City is ruled by four clans, Di, Li, Song, and Shun. Among them, the Di clan is the most powerful. In recent years, Donghi has run out of water, and now it is sold like gold. In these hard times, Li Yunxing is surviving by working for an illegal courier service. He hates how the things are going on in his city. Poor children have to beg for a drop of water every day. Yunxing can't do much in his position, and he is not afraid to take risks. He often breaks in the Day Clan's water supply and damages its pipes so the public can get some water. After returning, Yunxing gets on his next task to deliver a kitten, but the given address turns out to be fake. Someone just wanted to get rid of the poor cat. Yunxing lets the cat live freely on streets, but it keeps crawling back to Yunxing. He can't stand the charm of the cute little cat and keeps it. Afterward, he goes to meet Kasha, who works as a singer in a small nightclub. Kasha assumes that Yunxing brought the kitten for her, and she loves the gift. Yunxing takes Kasha for dinner with his family. He hasn't visited his home for a long time due to the conflicts with his father. On the way, they encounter Ao Bing, the son of Declan's master Ao Guang. Bing likes Yunxing's bike and tells him to name a price, but Yunxing speeds away without answering him. On reaching home, his brother Lai Jingxing welcomes them warmly, but their dad is as rude as always. He scolds Yunxing for having a shady job. The security is getting tight and this smuggling business will be banned soon. His dad believes that Yunxing should stop being stubborn and accepts working under the Day Clan. But Yunxing will never bow to the Inhuman Clan members and wishes he was just a stray cat that can live its life freely on the streets. Yunxing leaves the dinner in the middle and rides away with Kasha. Suddenly he realizes that someone is following them. It's Ao Bing and his men. The spoiled rich kid believes that he can get whatever he wants, and right now he wants Yunxing's bike. Yunxing isn't giving up either. He accelerates his bike and drives over the rushing train. Ao Bing and his men follow him and surround him from all sides. Yunxing succeeds in leaving them behind, but then Bing starts playing dirty and attacks with mysterious powers. Sharp Eyes spears through Yunxing and Kesha and even kills the poor kitten. Ao Bing reminds him what he said. He gets what he wants. He was about to leave, but the hidden power in Yunxing awakes too. He burns like a huge fire and attacks Ao Bing. The cowardly rich child runs away immediately while Yunxing falls unconscious. He wakes up in the hospital, but all of his deep injuries are miraculously healed quite soon. He rushes to check on Kasha, but the poor girl has lost her leg and is still not showing much recovery. The doctor there is the girl named Su Junju, who competed with Yunxing in the street racing, and he likes her for a long time. However, he's not in a state of starting romance. As soon as he gets out of the hospital, Jingxing greets him and asks, what happened? Before he can reply, Ao Guang reaches there and apologizes on his son's behalf. He also returns Yunxing's bike along with a huge amount of gold. Yunxing rejects the offer and tells Guang if he really wants to pay back, then he should bring out Bing's leg. Saying this, Yunxing rushes away on his bike while his brother follows him on his car. The Declan guards follow him too with the intention of killing him before he gets full control of his powers. On the way, Jingxing tries to convince Yunxing to accept the gold as it may aid their financial needs and pay Kesha's medical bills. But Yunxing can't accept the money that's earned by torturing innocent souls. Their conversation is interrupted by the D clan vans. They drive recklessly and try to kill both Lee brothers. Yunxing Jingxing pulls Jinxiang on his bike and drives over the dangerous cliff. They crash down on the other side, but the enemies are still after them. Jingxing falls unconscious, but Yunxing witnesses the two monsters stepping down from the car. It's a creepy jellyfish lady and an armored beast. The jellyfish lady grabs Yunxing and injects her poisonous tentacles into his neck. Afterwards, she instructs the other beast to hit Yunxing. But before he can do that, Yunxing's powers awaken and burn down the jellyfish monster. However, due to strong armor, the other beast survived. It tries to hit Yunxing, but another guy knocks him down with a mysterious trick. It's a weird masked guy who has followed Yunxing a couple of times before. He calls Yunxing as Neja and leaves without explaining himself. Yunxing doesn't have time to investigate the masked guy as he must take his brother to the hospital immediately. After admitting him in hospital, Yunxing gets back to meet the masked guy. Meanwhile, Ao Bing requests his dad to let him finish Yunxing. 
but Guang refuses immediately. The Neja spirit in Yunxing is way more than it seems. Guang is not a human either. He's the dragon of the East Sea, but the wound he got from Neja 3,000 years ago is still not healed. Yunxing is going to realize his power soon, because the masked man knows everything about Neja. The weird guy lives in a strange place full of magical instruments and creatures. The masked man reveals that Guang is the Dragon King, and Ao Bing is the third dragon prince who was killed by Neja in the past life. However, Guang used all his powers to forge a steel spine to bring Ao Bing back to life. It happened 3,000 years ago when the four dragon kings united to kill Nija. Since then, his soul has been wandering in the heavens and has been reincarnated again and again but never fought a worthy body to awaken. The dragon king has been keeping an eye on the clans for all these years so he can stop Nija from awakening. Ao Bing's dragon powers haven't woken up completely so Guang has decided to hire someone else to kill Yun Zhang. It's no other than the masked man. He has worked for the clan many times before for the sake of Money. The masked man calls himself useless because no one can stand against Nija, but Guang believes that the masked man must have a trick to solve this issue. Therefore, he leaves a huge amount of gold behind and waits for the masked man to accept his offer. Meanwhile, Yun Zhang's father blames him for the injuries caused to Jin Zhang and tells him to get lost. In anger, Yun Xing accidentally lights fire on his bike. He understands that his powers are not easy to control, so he goes back to ask help from the masked man. In exchange, he promises to forge a special motorbike for the mysterious man. The deal is done, and Yun Xing starts his training. First of all, he needs to learn how to control the fire with steel armor. Otherwise, it will burn down Yun Xing to death. After a few days of hard work, Yun Xing finally becomes able to have decent control of his powers. He also spares time to forge an artificial leg for Kesha so she can walk again. During a friendly match, he knocks off the mask and finally reveals the identity of his teacher. He's a demon called Six Ears Makak who is notorious for deceiving people. But Makaka tells Yunxing that Neja is an even worse spirit. Therefore, it should be kept under control. However, Yunxing will need the full power of Neja to get back Astra's, which is a heavenly ribbon that Neja used as a weapon. Yunxing gets back home and meets Su Junju, who also wants to take out her stress with street racing. Before they can start, the Day Clan attacks again. This time, it's a monster sent by Ao Bing. However, Yunxing is fully prepared and knocks down the monster in seconds. After the failed attempt, Ao Bing proceeds to his plan B, which is luring Yunxing's close friend with money. Meanwhile, Yunxing goes to check on his brother, but hears his father regretting having a troublesome son like Yunxing. The poor boy breaks down emotionally, but luckily, Su Junsu is there to cheer him up. Kesha wakes up, but seeing Yunxing with another girl boils her blood. She goes out for a walk, but witnesses Yunxing's friend messing with his armor. When he sees Kesha, he tries to kill her, but before he can do that, several fireballs are shooted at the hospital. It's the Day Clan. Yunxing steps forward to stop the attack, but the loose nuts of his armor don't let him function properly. Another of Nija's old enemies attacked Yunxing, but he defeated her too. When he gets back to check on the victims, he realizes that his dad is also severely injured. Before dying, he tells Yunxing that he is proud of having a brave and powerful son like him. Meanwhile, Makak is invited by Guang as a suspect who is helping Yunxing secretly. However, Makak refuses to accept it. Guang also shows him how he has stolen all the water from Donghai rivers to nourish the dragons and the dragon pearl. Soon he will be powerful enough to rule the heavens and earth. Back at the hospital, Yunxing can't take it anymore and decides to kill all of the Day Clan. Guang tries to control him with Astra's, but Yunxing breaks out of it, as the Dragon Pearl is still under formation. Guang wants to retreat, but Ao Bing volunteers to fight Yunxing. He gets in his full dragon form and attacks. Yunxing also summons Neja's soul and fights bravely. He tears off the steel spine and kills the dragon. The female warrior from earlier attacks Yunxing again but Mekik stops her. She starts accusing Neja for countless evil things he did in his last life. He killed several innocent beings just for amusement, so his father took away his astras, but he fought the Dragon Kings and killed the third prince. Hearing this all, Yunxing tells Mekik to let the girl go and asks why he's helping Neja if he's a bad spirit. Mekik finally reveals his true identity. He's the biggest historical hero, Sun Wukong, the Monkey King. He has been saving the world for millions of years, but now he's tired. He helped Yunxing so he could use Astras to defeat the Dragon King. Right now, the Astras are used in the underground Dragon Palace to keep the dragons captive and empower the Dragon Pearl. However, Wukong thinks that Yunxing can't do this task as he's a good guy. Neja's spirit only activates when Yunxing intends to harm others. He can't be Neja. Yunxing attends his father's funeral and feels defeated. Kasha tells him that she believes Yunxing is a hero 
and he always will be. This motivates Yung Sing, and he decides to defeat the Dragon King. He tells Neja's spirit in himself that he's going to save people and bring water back to Donghai, even if Neja doesn't help him. Yung Sing jumps in the hidden sea and uses a metal fish to reach the Dragon Palace. He tries getting back the Astras, but fails. Guan reaches there and reveals that he's holding Su Junju as hostage. Yung Sing challenges Guan for a fight, but he can't do it without the full power of Nijia. Guan gets triggered and swallows the Dragon Pearl. He also lets the Dragon Spirits leave, which will bring a tsunami to Donghai. Yung Sing pulls the Astras to stop the Dragon Spirits, but the Astras break. The whole city is going to be destroyed. Yung Sing sees Nijia's spirit again and begs him to save his city. The spirit is not as evil as people remember him. He gives all his power to Yung Sing and even reforms the Astras. Yung Sing stops the chaotic tsunami and brings peaceful rain. The city was saved, and Yung Sing got the Astras. He was definitely worthy of being Neja. If you don't want to accept your faith, then you must work to change it.